interrupt your regularly scheduled book week videos with something that is becoming, I guess, a habit of ours during Vlogmas. A Star Wars review! This is gonna be a short, spoiler-free Last Jedi review from me! So my initial thought is that it's very long. It is two and a half hours long. The length is noticeable, but the rest of the movie is entertaining and exactly what you want a Star Wars movie to be. For the most part, it holds your attention. There were some scenes like in Rogue One that I think could have been shortened or cut entirely. There's a lot of scenes where people are just staring off into space and like, I identify with that, like same bro, but also do we need that many types of establishing shots where we just have any given character staring off at stars. I think it was Mark Hamill that said that this movie is going to do things that you don't expect it to or it's going to end a way that you don't expect it to and I tend to agree with that. It didn't like take me by surprise or anything, it wasn't like a twist ending, but it just wasn't exactly what I had expected. I'm very confused about Supreme Leader Snoke. I can't say why, because I don't have words for it, but also because I don't want to spoil anything. I have so many questions, and they'll wait until January, but I just do. John Boyega's fantastic, again. Finn is exactly what I need him to be. Rose is a little bit different than what I expected, in a good way. Rose is absolutely adorable, and Kelly Marie Tran is wonderful. She's a amazing human being that is also alive at the same time that I am. We like barely deserve Rose. Poe gets a lot of development and I'm so proud of my son. Poe cares so much about everyone and everything and just doing the right thing, even if it means impulsive bad plans and someone calls him out on that and it's great. Luke has never been my favorite character. Like I, I don't actively dislike him for any reason. I just pay the least amount of attention to Luke. I love Mark Hamill, he's a great human being, and I'm really proud of his performance. Luke is just the most stubborn. He's a hero archetype, and it weighs him down. But Luke, like, makes some questionable decisions and stalls and does all kinds of things where you're just like, Luke, could you go a little bit faster, please? Still hate Kylo Ren. He's the worst. The absolute worst. Can't stand the guy. General Hux, I didn't even care about in The Force Awakens. Like, with this, I hate his morals and I hate who the person General Hux is, but I think he also got a little bit of development, at least in the writing and the amount of time that Domo Glazing gets to be on screen. But I liked him as an entity more in this movie than I did in The Force Awakens. Still, not enough Phasma. Like, I really like Captain Phasma, again, as an entity. I just don't like her as a person, but I love Gwendolyn Christie and I find Captain Phasma way more threatening than Kylo Ren. The scene with Finn and Phasma is as pleasing to watch as you think it is when you see it in the trailer. I had to tell my mom that Rose's sister's name is Paige. They say it, they say her name. She has a name in the movie, but it's a little hard to hear because of the action and everything. There's not enough of her. That's all I'm gonna say. Ray had some like wishy-washy things. I don't know if it's the writing or if it's just my initial reaction. I think a lot of my problems with Rey are not actually problems with Rey. I think a lot of the issues that I have rely on how often I sat back and thought, wow, this is this is Raylo fodder. Not that Raylo is in the movie, but that it's fodder. Objectively, Raylo like is not good. Lupita is in the movie. It's just not as much Lupita as I would have liked. I forgot that Benicio Del Toro is in the cast until he shows up and then he just kind of disappears. Like Benicio Del Toro's character doesn't have a name. There's another character that his character could have easily just been and like a whole 20 minutes of the movie would have been taken out. I think the second to last character I wanted to talk about was Laura Dern's character who like they said her name about a hundred times and I still don't remember what it was. She was interesting. I watched her closely. I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on with that character and she also surprised me. I cried so many times all over Leia. They really try to trick you at some point in the movie and like it worked and I was sitting there like I had to put the popcorn down. I was like, excuse me, what did you just make me watch? And then they're just kind of like, lol, nope, Leia can do everything and anything that she puts her mind to, including like things that she has never actually physically done in the movies before. It's Leia. I'll let it slide. She and Poe have a really interesting dynamic in this movie and it's fleshed out in exactly the way I was hoping it would be. He is definitely her adopted son. I am pro Porg. They really like serve no purpose in the story. They're just there. They don't take up as much time as other things 
that I had problems with. The little like ice fox things that look like Pokemon, those were pretty cool and they do serve a purpose in the story. Everything in this movie comes full circle, which is a good thing, but also some of those things take up too much time. They pose a lot of questions in the writing and the acting that end up being unanswerable, and not just because of the movie itself, but because of the question. I think some parts of this movie are extremely important given the current political climate globally and in specific countries, especially America, which is, you know, just what I'm the most familiar with. Leia's character especially. She's got the most poignant lines, I think, that really resonate with someone that is currently aware of what's happening in politics and on the internet. This movie does things that other Star Wars movies have never done before, and I think some parts of those are when it gets a little bit confusing. Other parts are what make it a unique Star Wars experience. I know that this video is supposed to be spoiler-free entirely, I'm sorry, but there is just one line that I absolutely have to talk about right now, and if you don't want any spoilers, you can skip ahead to the end screen. I'll leave a time code in the description for you. So you can go ahead and do that now. I'm waiting. You know Luke and Leia are gonna be united, right? So they're reunited and they have this conversation where they're kind of talking about Han and kind of talking about Ben and, and um, I'm crying thinking about it. Luke says to Leia, no one is ever really gone. It took me a second to think, Wow, did they write that before Carrie passed away or after? Wow. I promise I'm not sad. This is a very, like, a very Star Wars type message, I think, in that a lot of Star Wars is built on the idea of hope being the center of a rebellion. The idea that Carrie is never really gone is now the center of the rebellion for me. That's really all I can say. That's really all I can say. Okay, we're good. We're good. I just have a little bit of something in my eye. Is, I'm not crying. You're crying. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. In the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on The Last Jedi are if you've already seen it, but please do not spoil anything in the comments. There's a reason that this is supposed to be a spoiler-free review and a reason why I left a big and loud spoiler alert for the one thing that I needed to talk about. If you want to talk to me about the thing, contact me on Twitter or Tumblr. Those links are also in the description, as they always are, as well as my Kofi. If you're not already subscribed to The Princess and the Scrivener, please do so down below, especially if you'd like to see more videos on Disney, intersectional feminism, pop culture critiques, vlogmas, and more. In the meantime, The Scrivener will see you tomorrow.